Insider Brian Windhorst shares a concerning update about Jason Tatum, stating that his decision about his wrist this summer could be causing his poor shooting. That, plus a Celtics hopeful Jay Scrub, has a horrible, horrible injury update. So we'll be talking about all of this on this episode of Celtics Digest. But before we get into the video, a reminder that almost all of you, 90%, 89-90% of you guys watching this, are not subscribed. And if you enjoy what we do here at Celtics Digest, daily news for the Boston Celtics all season long, hit that button down below. We really appreciate all the support, and we hope you stick around with us for the long haul. Bruce, we got to talk about uh, a bit about Jay Scrub. And I know you're a big Jay Scrub guy, but we got a bit of bad news. It's the Boston Celtics tweet that Jay Scrub has suffered a torn right ACL during practice. Further updates will be provided as appropriate. And this just kind of sucks because Jay Scrub was a really big standout in the summer league. If we have a look, he averaged 14 and a half points, four boards, and an assist and a half, shooting 40% from the three point line. And he was going to try and make the team's rotation. Now, would he have played in a lot of games? Maybe not. But being 40% a 40 shooter from the three-point line is definitely serviceable if someone goes down. He's played some games with the Clippers and Magic. Uh, and yeah, he's averaged four points per game, one and a half boards in 41% field goal percentage. So Jay Scrub, while he might not have made a huge impact on the actual Boston Celtics roster, Bruce, it's it's just all it's always sad to see to see an injury like this. And I just wish him the best. Same here, Josh. I feel terrible for Jay Scrub. Me and Jay Scrub actually are born on the same birthday, which is actually oh, kind wow. of ironic, but I'm a huge fan of Jay Scrub for that. I noticed that he has played for the Magic and the Clippers, but hadn't really gotten a big run on those teams, kind of just facilitating with their G League affiliates. But with the Celtics, he played really good on their Summer League team, was poised to get a good G League spot. And even, like you said, maybe if a guy like Howes or if a guy like Banton had an injury, maybe Scrub would come up and be the third point guard or the third wing for the Celtics that night. Maybe not get a lot of play time for the Celtics, but could develop to get some playing time in the near future. Maybe if uh, we lose some other role players in two, three years, he could have been a valuable role piece for this team. And it's obviously sad that he goes down with the torn ACL. The Boston Celtics obviously most likely are going to waive Jay Scrub after this. Probably he'll have to do his rehabbing in the offseason and then have to fight for another contract next season. And that is more difficult for him than I think the team. But it's just a sad story to see with a guy that has a lot of promise in the league. You know, a young guy that being drafted as, from a Juco, being drafted in the second round, like coming from a hard story, you want to see that love and appreciation for him. And it's just sad to see him go in a way that just a practice injury to an ACL, one of the worst injuries to go as well. And just practice, not even like a game or anything like that. Couldn't really show his true potential on the Celtics, I think, for this yeah. team. Yeah, and like you said, right, he's one of those guys that took one of the harder roads to get to the NBA. And there's there's not many players that, that, that do that. And the players that do have some of the best basketball minds, have some of the best work ethics in the business. And when you're a guy like Jay Scrub, you show out in Summer League, you get signed to a deal by the Boston Celtics. You're like, I got another chance, right? He looks at the Boston Celtics wing depth. He's like, hey, maybe I got a real shot here. And to be shut down with a torn ACL is, is just brutal. But look, Bruce, I know the Celtics gave him a chance. Do you think once he's healed, even if they have to waive him for whatever reason, do you see a world where maybe the Boston Celtics circle back around on him when he's healthy again to try and give him another shot? I think that's definitely a possibility. I think if he were to rehab through this injury and next season he would want to play on the summer league team for the Celtics, I think the Celtics would definitely give him another shot as they already liked him from his training camp and how he did with the summer team league team last year. Like you said, he shot 40% from three, one of the best shoot, shooting players on the G League team alongside J.D. Davidson and Jordan Walsh, who are, you know, key contributors to this team. Jordan Walsh getting a contract, J.D. Davidson being another two-way guy. So he was one of the better G League players for the Celtics and probably would have been one of the main standouts on this team. So I think that the Celtics would look at him next year if he was willing to give them another opportunity for sure. Yeah, I think that would be cool. And hey, best wishes to Jay Scrub. Hope you heal up well. Um, but let's talk a bit about this. Now, look, this is sort of an injury update, sort of not. But I mean, if look, if you guys watch the game, you know, Jason Tatum did not have a great game. I mean, sometimes he has games like this, right, where he just kind of goes out there and it's not clicking. Every star has these kind of games. And, you know, Jason Tatum is, is no stranger to having a bad shooting night. But uh, Brian Windhorst, there's some of our some people like him some people don't whatever but he goes out and says this is a post on reddit by a biased nba fan this is a clip from a podcast he said that tatum's poor shooting recently might be because he forewent wrist surgery in the off season quote he got three or four opinions and to use tatum's words not all of them suggest surgery he said he did what he needed to do in hopes that that's going to be enough and uh, look, there's some concern as, you know, last night, Jason Tatum shot three for 13 from the field, 0 for four from three in 27 minutes. And a few days ago, there was a clip about him missing jumpers in an open gym. It went viral because, oh, he lost his shooting touch, lost all this. Listen, this is insanity, okay? 
Jason Tatum has multiple years of being an all NBA guy. He is up there in the MVP conversation. What's going to be probably every year for the next five, 10 years. Like this guy is an MVP candidate. He's one of the best players in the NBA. He has a, a huge backlog of proof behind why he's that good. We have a small clip of him missing in an open gym. Let's just ignore the hundreds and if not thousands of hours that he's put in that weren't recorded where he was probably making everything. And then we also have him in one preseason game where he probably wasn't expecting to play 27 minutes. Maybe he was just tired. And he's also put on a ton of muscle this offseason, Bruce. And we all know that can really really change your shooting form as well it could just be an adjustment period i just feel like an overreaction to to one summer league game like i'm seeing a lot of people on on twitter especially saying jason tatum again like you saw in that clip that lost his shooting touch they watched this game oh my gosh he looks i just i just feel like it's a crazy overreaction i, I don't know what your thoughts are but this is this frustrating to me <laughs> I totally agree with you. I think it's a little bit of an overreaction. It's the first preseason game, guys. And these guys, yeah, it's preseason. They are going to try, but they're not giving it their whole 100%. They obviously want to just show us stuff. But you got to take these games with a grain of salt. Take the good things out of them and say, we're going to do good with this. But you also got to look at the negatives. Obviously, we weren't that great at rebounding last night. We need to improve in that. We need to improve our shot selection as well. But Jason Tatum can also improve in tonight's game, can improve in the other preseason games. There's so much more time for him to get used to this. And he said that multiple doctors told him that he didn't need to get this surgery. And he believed that he didn't need to get this surgery. So if multiple doctors who are, you know, he trusts are telling him that, I think that a report from Brian Windhorst kind of just means nothing to me. Obviously, Jason Tatum last night didn't have the greatest shooting night, but he was doing other things, getting rebounds. He was the leading rebounder last night, was the leading assister for a little while for the Boston Celtics. He was doing the intangible things for them to work. And yeah, he was shooting poorly from three, but so were some other players from the Boston Celtics as well. Jalen Brown didn't turn up until the third quarter. Yeah, Kristaps Porzingis and Peyton Pritchard were the two best players last night for the Celtics, but it wasn't even the two Jays that were the two best players and we still got the W. So I think that Jason Tatum can have these off nights, yes, but it's not to be a big concern. Every player has their good Good nights and their bad nights yeah and with the celtics roster construction now with so many talented scorers right you got jalen brown you got chris s Porzingis, even got drew holiday Derek white peyton pritchard if he's able to score a little more this year you have guys that can step up if tatum's having an off night and again he has these every now and then that's just a thing you get with jason tatum he's not going to go out there he's most nights he's going to shoot 50 percent plus but some nights he's going to have stinkers and that is what it is and preseason is it, it means basically nothing like yes it gives you a good indication you can definitely take con some conclusions from it but overall, the reaction that we're seeing, Bruce, and I know not everyone, like a lot of you watching probably don't have this reaction, but if you go online, you'll see this kind of reaction, overreaction to, to Jason Tatum's one game, plus this viral clip of him missing in an open gym. But look, all things considered, uh, Bruce, I think the only way I'd ever be concerned is if we're like 10 games into the season and he's shooting 20% from three or something like that. Because again, sample size matters in cases like this. And could it be his wrist? Maybe. But Jason Tatum was shooting pull-up threes last night. And in his career, he's really not a great pull-up three-point shooter. He's about a 30% guy. The odds that he misses four of them? Reasonably high. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like there's just no reason to be concerned yet. And there won't be any reason until we're at least a little ways into the regular season if we see this continue. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that point. I think, like you said, we shouldn't see any concern unless we're 10, 15 games into the season and Tatum is still struggling with his shot while everyone else is still getting it down. You know, Jalen Brown's rapidly hitting, Pritchard's excelling, Porzingis is doing good, and then I could see that being a problem. But like guys last night also didn't play the best. Sam Hauser, a guy who was a great three-point shooter off the bench, was just jacking up shots and kept missing and mm -hmm. uh, you got to love that effort coming out of him honestly just the, the the stop of you know just keep trying keep trying even if you keep missing but sometimes that's going to happen to a guy like him or a guy like Tatum it's just natural to happen to a born scorer that wants to go out there and score with the three-point line being more of a game value to this game these players are going to want to prioritize that three and just jack up more threes and that's what's going to happen so you're going to see their numbers be a little bit more skewed if they're going to miss those more shots these players aren't driving to the mid-range we've seen that tatum worked on it a little bit in the second half but we need to see a little bit more of that i think out of the celtics yeah for sure and look there's a lot of time to fix all these issues it's kind of what preseason's for you kind of see where your weaknesses are and you try and work on them a little bit tweak them as much as you can because you're finally getting back into in-game action against other nba squads before the season starts and that's what it is it's tinkering you're going to have some bad nights you're going to have some good nights you're going to see some good some bad from all over the place you try and fix it as best as you can and hey all we can do is hope that the celtics start the season on the right note.
But that'll do it for this news episode of Celtics Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We're so close to a thousand subs. And if you're still watching at this point in the video and you haven't hit that button and you enjoyed this video, hit it now. Help us be help be part of the first thousand to subscribe to this channel. We really appreciate your support. I'm Josh Goss from my co-host Bruce Velez. We'll catch you in the next one.